political thuggery a threat to democracy. Before we continue, let us seize the opportunity to condemn in solidarity with other global citizens and world leaders the sexual violence of some Iranians as a means of repressing the ongoing protests against the violation of women's rights in Iran in the wake of the annual campaign of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence worldwide. Political thuggery is like a cancer that has eaten deep into our political processes over the years and it is a very huge threat to the advancements of democracy in Nigeria. This huge threat has often led to violence that has caused loss of life and properties. For instance, in the 2019 elections, the Center for Democracy and Development recorded 10 deaths and 129 cases of violence and electoral crimes in the polls in Kogi and Baisa states. Very recently, the campaign train of the Lagos PDP gubernatorial candidates, including governorship candidates, were attacked by suspected miscreants while returning from the Badagri local government area of Lagos State in late October. Also, two boys were almost beaten to death in Oshodi for carrying the Labour Party flags. In Oyo, APC gubernatorial candidates were attacked while staging a solidarity walk for the 2023 presidential candidates of APC. This shows that no political party is immune from electoral violence or thuggery. What is political thuggery? Political thuggery is an aspect of social violence in which thugs move mostly in groups, victimizing, terrorizing, intimidating, and injuring innocent individuals and, and persons of different political stand. Accordingly, this affects individuals to pose deadly threats by deterring individuals to be active in political processes and routine. Social economic activities at their homes, shops, and on the streets. These talks are youth mostly and recruited by some political allies to serve their interests. Causes of political togri. The major cause of political togri are money politics. People involving in political processes for quick financial gains would most likely be easily recruited as political thugs. Massive unemployment. Some persons who are not gainfully employed can be easily persuaded to be involved in political thuggery. Unpopular candidates. When certain political candidates do not have the broad support of the masses, they seem to take advantage of their proximity to power and influence electoral violence. Corbyn political thuggery. Massive sensitization. Relevant government agencies and other stakeholders should enlighten the general public on several negative effects of political thuggery and election violence. Government should, through the judiciary, create specific laws and set up special courts to try electoral offenders, including political thugs. Also, political parties should be largely held accountable for political violence or thuggery for many of their supporters. Security agents should be mandated to deploy all relevant means to curbing political thuggery and preventing election violence. In conclusion, politi political thuggery and election violence could lead to large-scale anarchy and insecurity, which could disrupt peace and socioeconomic sustainability in the nation, which is a very huge threat to democracy and national progress. Therefore, the only way to register our political interests is to vote peacefully and not through promoting violence. In the words of Aung San Suu Kyi, a Bumasi politician, diplomat, author, and a 1991 Nobel Peace Prize laureate who served as State Councillor of Myama, that's Burma in Southeast Asia, and Minister of Foreign Affairs from 2016 to 2021. The democracy process provides for political and social change without violence. Yes. So this issue of political to agree is is actually a threat to peaceful elections. Because most times during elections, people, I remember the last elections, I wanted to go vote. Then my neighbor came to say, she told my mom, he mentioned that 
you know, some people were at the polling booths, you know, trying to cause issues. So that made a lot of people to stay back. It was when the police intervened that people had the freedom to, you know, go back to the polling booth. So I, 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 I hope that in the coming elections, um, w the police will be able to monitor uh, each, each polling unit and ensure that there are no talks. Because when, when there, there are talks there, a lot of people won't come out to vote. So I, I believe it's actually a threat to peaceful elections. And talks, talks are everywhere. So when we're talking of political toggery, we know that there are the talks who, you know, are used to um, doing the political, you know, for political matters. So I'm, I'm just concerned about the elections in all, in all that you mentioned, that I hope that um, during the elections, this would not be a threat to people coming out to vote. So people have that peace of mind, that freedom to express themselves and vote during the elections. Yeah, you, are, you have a point. You know, um, electoral violence or violence during mm. elections uh, perpetrated by mostly by political talk mm. is usually a way of sabotaging our democratic process, especially when the candidate is mm. seem not, you seem to be unpopular among the masses. Exactly. If you're a popular, let's say if the masses generally like you as a candidate, mm. you will not need to deploy talks mm. to fight That's your way true. through. You can't fight your way through into the hearts of people. But you mm. can work your way through strategically by doing the right things and saying the right things mm. and and maybe the manner in which you carry out your campaign mm. we have a way of endearing you to the masses mm. in that way this can actually reduce the incidence of togri like you mm. see in most states in nigeria once you have a particular candidate that is so popular among the masses and is of a different political stand from those that are prox that are in close proximity to power in that mm, state, mm. you will see that the government, the particular, some persons in government will be instigating some talk against this person. Yes. And sometimes they use the instrument of security apparatus in their disposal to, to either fight them or restrain some of their movements. Mm. As seen in uh, states like, uh, I think, um, one of the southeastern states where the governor was announcing that they are not going to get access to... Uh, public facilities for their campaign, mm. opposing party. Just imagine um, that same state. Do you think that opposing uh, uh, parties will, be, will feel safe in such state? They won't feel exactly. safe. So, um, Shego, what do you think about this? To the aspects that we, we touched on on the last topic, our sport, uh, the, the people in government have actually uh, weaponized this idea by not giving and um, giving engaging the youth in in, in a positive way how do i mean if we have a large population of youth in our country and most of them are not gainfully employed if you don't expect somebody who is well employed i mean well paid in one job to be involved in tugby most of those that you see involved in government are either uneducated uh, or they are not even employed at all. So they, they, they tend to look for means of livelihood. And so when you have high do hands, uh, it, they become, I, I mean, weapons for political uh, uh, gladiators to perpetrate all this. And in a way, they try, they try to truncate the electoral process and make people who are normally who normally will want to vote right not to come out of their homes there's a way to ensure that you put fear in the minds of people and you know even your your mom and your dad will be calling you from the state from their own state to, to say please don't go out don't go out and vote because of the havoc that this dog can can, can work and so and again it has become a weapon in the hands of uh politicians because it, it has first started so wrong to the extent that they, they they use it to to have their way even when they have not performed because like you said if you have performed your works will speak for you if you have done well if you have delivered on your social contracts agreement that you signed with the people it will be it will be very easy for you to write to power again it will be very easy for you know your works will speak for you but in this case you see politicians want just uh, to get onto power 
draw all sorts of um, display their ineptitude. And at the end of the day, they want to again regain power for a second, third, or fourth time. And so they feel there's no other way to do this than to ensure that the process is truncated. People are uh, are not uh, willing to come out to vote rightly and wisely. So I think that is that is it. So if we are able to ensure that our youth are gained really employed, everyone uh, is. I mean, you have a fruitful uh, engagement that you are involved in. It will be very difficult for someone to say, uh, I should come and join a train of violence to wreck our work on one person or the other. So but when people are not gainfully employed, it makes it easier for them. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Shegu. So, um, uh, Barisol Lushola, you know, you, the last time in your segment, you talked about CBN trying to control uh, much uh, cash in outside the banks in, in circulation and not used gainfully. Yeah. Now, do you think that will, in a way, solve the problem of money politics? Because money politics is what breeds electoral mm -hmm. violence. So what do you think about that? Y yes, I think, I think the new Naira notes, the redesign, would, um, would help a great deal, you know, to reduce such issues, such issues of um, political toggery and all of that. Because, you know, if you want to be, a, most times in political toggery, there is exchange of money. Yes, that is what uh, happens, and I believe this policy would, this new policy on the Naira would help a great deal. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Uh, Mr. Shegu, just before we round up, what's your idea on the fact that, or do you agree or disagree with the fact that, you know, sometimes we seem to trivialize this at attack on opponent political candidates or parties in a state, not knowing that this effect could be cascaded into a huge anarchy or national security issue. What do you think about that? Because sometimes we seem to trivialize it. I mean politicians, many of them seem to trivialize it, not knowing that this could be of great negative effect. So what do you think? Yeah, in a way, they, they, what they try to do, even when you ask them, I mean, straight up, that, I mean, your people are doing this and that, and it can cause violence, they tend to downplay it and say they are not the ones, it's not our supporters. Yeah, you tend to ask the question, who are those supporters are they? If you say party A is being attacked by school talks and uh, the party B is, is claiming not to have anything to do with it. So it, it, I think it, it has to do with uh, the electoral acts that has to ensure that anybody involved in electoral violence is, is tried and then made to face the music. And if we begin to uh, met uh, punishment to those that have been found wanting in these areas. And uh, we begin to have a sinner society, and then people will begin to run away from such activities, and then our electoral process will be more and more uh, prudent, and then, uh, sorry, not prudent, uh, uh, will, be, will be more transparent, and people will be willing to join in. We have a situation we are people of uh, like minds uh, with good motives are not ready to join politics because they feel it is dirty. They don't want to be stained, they don't want to be maimed, they don't want to be killed. Their families uh, don't want them to even join because it can, it can uh, spell, I mean, mean the hand for them in all, in all ways. So, electoral act has to be enforced such that people are made to face the music for the offenses they have committed in the electoral process. Thank you very much, Mr. Shegu. So, uh, to our viewers out there, let's try our best to shun violence and make only statements by voting accordingly to our conscience. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocates. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocates ng or on twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hashtag the advocates ng to catch up with previous brokers go to our plus tv africa.com forward slash the advocates ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa till next week same time on this station let's keep advocating for a better society bye bye yeah.